started by getting divorced about 35 years ago and for a while you know I just went about my life trying to do it on my own without the help of God I didn't know God didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and I just went along like that for about six seven years and all of a sudden I came to the end of my rope I had no idea what to do with my life. I was, felt empty and lonely and nothing was working. I was raising two boys on my own and so it was very difficult. And one day I just fe literally fell on my knees and called out to God. Um, I was 44 years old and this was the first time I tried to speak to God and then what I did is I decided to find a church in my neighborhood to just go check out. Um, I had never been in a Christian church so I really did not know anything about it. So I chose a Saturday uh, to go over to a church because I figured there were no services on Saturdays. Um, little did I know that there are. I discovered that they look just like me. So I decided to go inside. And I sat in the very last row in a seat right next to the door so that I could leave in case I didn't like it. <laughs> and what I heard for the very first time in my life was that Jesus loves me. And I was literally shocked by that. And so I stayed for the service and that was on a Saturday like I said I was so enthralled by that what I heard I went back on Sunday and stayed for two more services just so I could hear that Jesus loves me I had never heard that before in my life and about three weeks later uh, with a pastor at that church I accepted the Lord and from that, I have grown and grown, and I continue to grow. Uh, I want to be useful to the Lord, and so here I am, and I'm so glad I am. I grew up in an Air Force family. Um, my dad was in the Air Force for 24 years, so we moved around a lot. Uh, about every two, three years, we were picking up and moving to a new state. Um, as a child, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was exciting. Um, I got to meet new people, um, and it was very educational. Uh, we were able to uh, connect with all sorts of different people in different states. Uh, it was kind of fun to uh, learn that even in America there's all these different dialects and people don't sound the same in one state versus another state. Um, at the time I was married and my husband was from New York. He had a very strong Bronx accent. Uh, we were traveling through Texas on the way to Arizona and um, I have a cousin in Texas who has a very strong southern drawl and the two of them could not understand each other, although they're both American. Um, so while in the Air Force, uh, we moved around and we loved it. Something I didn't like too much was changing schools, you know, but uh, we learned to deal with it. And I had uh, three sisters and a brother. We all just kind of just went with the flow. And literally that, I believe, matured us faster than maybe other children our age and uh, what I really like is that it taught us to love all kinds of people. We moved to Spain and we lived in Spain for three and a half years and we lived in a northern town called Zaragoza near the Pyrenees Mountains and we lived in the town because there was no base housing so uh, we dealt with all the Spanish people there in that town for for nearly everything. We would have to go buy our bread at the local 
wine store because that's where they sold the bread was in the wine store. We had to learn to speak Spanish and we learned right away conversational Spanish and so that we could communicate with all the shop owners and so forth and it was, it was very educational. Um, most Americans in Spain have nannies for their children and so we had someone in our house all the time that was Spanish and I really loved her. Uh, she taught us a lot of things and so it was all very educational. And when we were in Spain at the end of the three and a half years, my dad came home and said to my mom, we're moving to Glasgow. And she goes, Scotland? And he goes, no, Glasgow, Montana. And we had never heard of it. It's a little bitty town about 25 miles from the Canadian border. And so that's where we moved. And we arrived there in September, and there was already snow on the ground. And there is snow on the ground in Montana about nine months out of the year. So the whole experience was very exciting. Well, I had had an idea about doing a blog for divorced or single again women, widowed, single moms for a very long time. And I didn't know where to begin with that. Um, I had prayed about the Lord giving me a vision for a very long time. And um, suddenly after many months, I heard him speaking to me. And uh, just giving me an idea that I could do this through a blog. And um, I had been trained um, at my church, and so I felt that I could do this. I felt the Lord leading me, and so I didn't know it was so easy to begin a blog. And I found a host and in doing it through that, and I just write um, three, four times a week, and I base the stories that I use on my blog from my own experience. I've been divorced for 35 plus years, and I remember that when I was first divorced, I was uh, barely 40, and I was so lost and so lonely and empty didn't know what to do or where to go without a spouse. And it was difficult. And I didn't have anyone I knew of that I could go to for help. At the time, I was not a Christian. So I didn't have a church family to go to. I tried many other things. You know, I tried, uh, tried friends. I tried, you know, all sorts of things uh, that didn't work and uh, eventually um, I did become Christian and joined a church but still uh, the main thing is is what I've noticed after being a Christian for 20 something years um, I noticed that the church doesn't offer an awful lot to divorced women um, mainly you know, churches have lots of classes and programs for married couples, uh, even for, you know, single youth. Uh, but I noticed there is really nothing for the divorced woman. And I just felt God asking me to encourage women, to uh, speak to them from my own experience. Uh, and hopefully what they hear is where they can go, possibilities that they can look for in their life, how to move forward with a positive attitude. Um, I don't, uh, I don't d dwell on anything negative. Uh, there is no male bashing on my blog. There, we don't talk about that. What I want is for women to figure out how to move forward in their life. Um, with a positive attitude and to know that God is there to help them. He's never going to leave them. He, and what I like 
in the Bible is it mentions a couple of different places that Jesus will hold your right hand. To a divorced woman, that is something very special because sometimes she doesn't have a lot of people that will hold her hand, uh, that will walk her through the difficulties. So I'm just hoping that if one woman uh, feels that she can step up and change her life, um, then I've done my job. My book, um, I'm working on a book uh, sort of on the same line as my blog is written on. It's going to be for divorced women, uh, maybe a little more uh, humorous stories, uh, stories that I hear from other women, but as well as my own stories. And I want it just to be uh, a collection of essays, basically, that will, you know, help a woman to not only be encouraged and figure out where she can find her passions, uh, but also to give her the idea that, you know, life is not ended, it will go on, and that she can still have a valuable life, and she can find where to use her spiritual gifts, what her purpose is in life. Uh, we all have a purpose. Many women who are divorced think that their life is over, and it's really not. It's just different. And so being in a different kind of time in her life, a different season, she will hopefully find a way to just move on. The past is the past. We can't do anything about yesterday. We can only do deal with today. Tomorrow's not even only God knows if tomorrow is going to arrive for us. So we have to deal with today and make everything possible for today.